recording the, the webinar and I'm going to share my screen so you all can see it. Um, will you just let me know that you can see it? Can see. Perfect. Occasionally I will switch back and forth between my screen and the webinar um, function um, with my web camera. I am in a hotel and it is a little funky lighting, so we're going to go with it. But I have a few things that I want to show to you all. So if at any point the switchover isn't working out very well, um, just holler and let me know um, through either the chat function or, you know, if it's really bad, just um, shout and unmute yourself. <laughs> um, just some housekeeping. I, you know, if you have to hop off at any point, please don't worry. I will record and share slides with everybody. Um, so don't worry about that. I know a few of our folks, especially because I had to reschedule from last week, are visiting family at spring break here, there, and everywhere else. I know it's uh, cherry blossom time here in DC. So there are people out and about. Go do what you got to do. This is not, you know, anything. We're not curing a disease today. I just wanted to give you all an opportunity to see some things you might not have seen yet. Um, and out of courtesy to others, please mute yourself through the, the web chat function. Um, at the top, there is a microphone and you can click it from green to red so that you can turn off your microphone. Um, and if you're on the phone calling in, just mute so that um, we don't hear all your background noise if you're ordering a milkshake at McDonald's or whatever the case might be. Um, and if you have any questions, make sure to use the chat function and I will try to make sure to keep my eyes on that when possible so that you all can see the various things that we're doing here and there. Um, but I can also answer your questions. So today I just want to quickly, um, briefly say thank you to all of you for, for joining us and for being involved. We've had a lot more tab involvement in curriculum recently. A lot of you reviewed things for me, especially with the new uh, efficiency and conservation items. And a lot of you are doing workshops for us throughout the country again this year um, and this summer. And so I just wanted to make sure that those of you who are doing that are able to see some of these items. And maybe also offer some opportunities where if you're looking for something to do this summer or if you have some expertise on an item we're working on in the next few weeks or something that you're providing any insight our way our way that could be helpful um, so the things that I just want to focus on first and the bulk of our time we will spend on the efficiency and conservation curriculum some of this has been online since late fall, early winter, um, with the elementary guide coming online in mid to late January. So it's been around for a little while. Some of you may have had a chance to see it. Um, but with the changeover from our old curriculum to our new, uh, this current curriculum, some folks in workshops were still receiving our old materials, uh, monitoring and mentoring and learning and conserving because we felt it was pretty wasteful to um, not utilize the massive amounts of books that we had still had in our hands. And we wanted to make sure if we had them, we, we used them effectively. So um, we'll go over the efficiency and conservation curriculum, each title, and I'll showcase briefly some of the changes in materials and I encourage you, as always, especially if you're facilitating, um, that you please, please, please read not only the student guide, but the teacher guide. Um, because when we have two titles, there are often, especially when you're going to a workshop, we might only ship you, Wendy might only ship you the student guide for something, the student handout for something. But there are some key components that go along with that, some reminders for you, some extension questions, some additional content that you might need to be aware of that always come in the teacher guide. So I really encourage you to check that out, um, especially because some of that that is beefed up this year, especially with this efficiency and conservation curriculum. And then also, I'm going to briefly talk about the plays and info book activities. I feel like those are things you could download quite quickly. Um, but we have added a new play this year, which I think you're all going to love if you haven't found it yet. Um, and the info book activities were overhauled a lot. And these creative 
juice items sort of came, not sort of, definitely came from Cindy Welchko, who has been slogging through doing um, standards updates and has really needed to put her brain to use in a happy way that was not letters and charts and things. And she's really really gone above and beyond and I as she's with her family this week I'm not sure Cindy I think you're on but I just we owe Cindy a lot of thanks because she really put some fun back into some things that had been around for a while and we're going to keep adding some new plays and things and we have Riley her daughter to thank for some of that because a lot of the inspiration for these stories came from Riley's current reading list which is awesome so uh thanks big thanks to cindy and i'll give you a quick overview of all of those things and then finally we'll talk about what's on deck for 2019 and i can't believe we're talking about 2019 2020 curriculum but we are and we're doing edits right now um i'm doing some stats into the info books already the catalog and the curriculum packet for our workshops is already been started so there are a few new items that we're trying to infuse that some of you might be able to help with so that's where we're headed today and i'm just going to go ahead and get going in case anybody has any questions first i'll give a brief second to to do that otherwise we will go ahead and get started and wow greg holman thank you for being a champ and doing this while you still have kids with you <laughs> so all right, well, let's get going. So efficiency and conservation, we decided to sort of um, take this up a notch. Our efficiency and conservation had been around for a while. Um, it was something that I used heavily when I was teaching, and I know a lot of you use heavily, um, and things needed an overhaul. One of the main challenges with doing this is uh, in the past, data hadn't been updated very frequently by the sources that we collect data from. So it was a little bit of a challenge to think about it from that mindset, but the activities themselves needed a look, a good look. And one of our major um, questions and concerns from, from folks was that the levels that we had prior um, to these current new levels were confusing. Um, monitoring and mentoring and learning and conserving didn't follow the traditional grade bands that we were using in and throughout our need curriculum. And the rigor sort of wasn't there for the secondary level. And folks at elementary level felt like the rigor wasn't there for building buddies. So we wanted to increase that rigor, make the grade bands a little more um, in line with what we currently do and take a better look at how some of those activities could be expanded. For example, um, if we're still doing analog meter reading activities and a lot of a lot of kids don't have access to analog meters, it might not make sense to keep those around. So some of those things were removed and we came up with, and a few of you weighed in on this through a survey, um, we came up with three new titles and they are school energy inspectors, school energy experts, and school energy managers. And then we have a home component for managing home energy use. Um, the key thing to note about this new unit is that all of those titles whether they're focusing on the school or the home, follow the same six lesson format um, as you see on the screen there. So the first lesson gives everybody an introduction to energy at the appropriate level. Um, lesson two is going to talk about thermal energy and the building envelope. Lesson three is electricity. Four is lighting. Five asks them to kind of consider how all of those pieces work together. And then uh, step six for them to conduct their auditing. And um, so I think it's important that we just go, kind of go ahead and delve into them. I'm going to go ahead and start with um, elementary. So elementary is entitled School Energy Inspectors, and inspectors sort of implies that we are doing a peripheral look. Um, and so the inspectors are really just beginning to inspect energy use in school. And the notable changes from building buddies to school energy inspectors um, is that we really increased the energy content. Building buddies in prior um, the prior iteration was pretty basic. Um, it focused on school and home. And so with this new unit, 
we're focusing only on the school as the learning laboratory with little minor mentions of home for context within the text based pieces. Um, and the other thing about Building Buddies is it didn't incorporate any of the tools. So a lot of uh, our elementary schools would come to workshops and they would say, well, why am I not going to get monitoring and mentoring kit? Because it comes with more stuff. My kids would actually want to use these tools. And so we really wanted to bring those tools into the elementary level. And with that, we realized, OK, so there's stickers and trinkets that were included in Building Buddies, where students were inspecting their building, looking for energy, wasteful behaviors and energy responsible behaviors and, you know, making those notifications and we said maybe the the best thing to do would be to take those pieces out but in turn ask the students to create their own and be the ones who make the posters make the door hangers make the rewards and sort of do the PR piece themselves rather than us providing stickers and things that might end up going to waste um, and really put the kit to be something useful and provide those tools for the, the classroom. Um, we also included baseload balance at an elementary level where students are going to use a bucket balance to look at electricity um, demand at a smaller level and generation that is supplied. And so they can begin thinking about what it means to have a blackout or a brownout if you're drawing too much energy at a certain time. The major things that we kept, um, a lot of folks really like to use the energy I used today. Um, so that activity was rolled back in and we still kept the building buddies mindset so we're still asking students to be um, buddies of their building energy consumption and kind of come up with a plan but um, we you know retooled that title so to speak um, so that is the major change for school energy inspectors and with that i want to kind of give you a brief look and i realize that you all can download these items, but I want to sort of kind of talk you through it and hopefully you all can um, sort of see what the, the guides are looking like um, as you're going to be workshopping or incorporating these into your classroom. So inspectors, again, that six, six lesson format, we have our text about saving and uh, about introducing students to energy consumption, sort of defining energy. Uh, and this hybridizes this level, um, the elementary energy info book, a little bit of science of energy and energy works and kind of pulls the text based pieces from those together with the energy efficiency content that we had had in our other guides before. Um, so in lesson one, students, as you can see, are getting their introduction to energy, sort of getting their minds on what the concept of energy is. Um, we have some crossover from Science of Energy. Here you'll see our um, handouts that we have. We wanted to make sure students are appropriately introduced to the terms that they're going to be exploring and looking at um, energy in their day-to-day -day lives so that they can sort of really make a good decision about what energy looks like in their building. So today an energy was brought in here as well. Um, and then we brought in in lesson two, thermal energy. And this is a really nice way to call out um, our energy works text that the elementary teachers really enjoy and use a lot. I know it's a heavy hitter in Kentucky um, and at some of the NSTA elementary sessions I had done recently, a lot of folks really enjoyed using energy works. So we wanted to kind of pull in things from energy works in the energy efficiency context. So students are getting a basic understanding of temperature, and then we're also introducing them to the terms radiation, conduction, and convection um, with the discussion of insulation. And they're gonna do a basic insulation activity using various types of cups. And again, that's calling out that energy works activity that we already have, but sort of tweaking it a little bit to fit the efficiency and conservation framework. Um, they're also bringing in draft dodging uh, as well to think about how thermal energy can move. Then we transition into electricity. Um, and we wanted to make sure we call out electrical safety because safety is a key component for a lot of our um, sponsors and 
especially at that elementary level, reminding students about electrical safety. Um, and plenty of adults I've been seeing recently just yanking on cords so it can't hurt everybody to see it. Um, and to sort of get them thinking about all of the ways in which they use electricity. And we wanted to bring in that kilowatt meter and do some basic energy math. And we realized that for third graders, this might be a little higher order thinking, but there's plenty of discussion about calling out how to get there in the teacher guide. Um, because we have had feedback from elementary teachers that said, you know, hey, I'd really like to use this kilowatt meter with my elementary students. And when we have auditors going into schools, they're using the, the kilowatt meters with elementary students and the elementary students are loving it. They're digging it and they're doing the math. So we, we wanted to make sure that we're bringing that along in to this curriculum. Um, students are also going to get the lighting. So the light bulbs are still included here. Um, and then they also get the light meter to do a basic lighting investigation. Um, and we brought in the facts of light and we pared it down and it's definitely there in multiple formats, but that repetition piece was key here with our elementary students. And then finally, we wanted them to think about how energy systems work together um, in a school. So we gave them some story based concepts to kind of look at that. And they're going to compare two schools. So the language arts piece is here. Um, and we want to ask them to sort of identify differences between the two schools, looking for those positive energy based behaviors so that they can then interpret that in their own school. And then finally, we want them to start observing their own building and then applying what they compared and contrasted in the stories to their own school. So what could they improve? Um, and they're going to use the school audit form that we sort of amended from the other levels. And then finally, make a building buddy energy plan. Um, so what are the things that they could work on in the various spaces in their school? And how could they get the, the rest of the class or classes to hop on board with them? Um, if I shift over to the teacher guide, you'll notice um, one of the things that some of you might notice, and I know that this is handy for facilitators, um, and you may never have seen this or noticed this, we started linking our teacher um, teacher guide table of contents pages so that now if when you download a guide, you want to head straight to the answer keys or straight to the forms of energy master, for example, if you click on that, it will take you directly to page 32. Um, I have that function turned off in my um, on my laptop because of my very peripheral basic version of Adobe. Um, but for the, the rest of you, when you download the book, you should be able to um, find those links directly. So I just wanted to highlight that really briefly. Um, and I wanted to remind you all that not only do you see the kit contents on page three when you're facilitating for work uh, for a workshop, when teachers want to know, pull the guides out from the box and you can show them the, the kit list, but you can also show them the kit list by activity and the breakdown of what additional materials they will need. Um, and in the case of the efficiency and conservation suite, the majority of the items that they will need are things that they may already have in their classroom. Um, as you can see here, the thing that some school or some teachers struggle with is the lamp issue um, for the lighting activity. Um, and some of the folks might struggle with like the cups activity for insulation. So it might be worth it to call that out and go over that with them in case they might be interested. Um, and sort of if I scroll through here, same sort of basic teacher guide layout that you're used to. But I do want to remind you to look at the teacher guide before you're facilitating for all three levels. We brought back and kept in there our bingos and conservation in the round so that those can still be used. And then elementary base load balance, I just wanted to showcase to you. It's a teacher guide only item. and it asks students to look at and it's really guided as you're going to see in the teacher guide and as you may see here as I zoom in briefly um, there are things to say it's a, a more scripted activity students are going to use a bucket or a double pan balance um, and use either Lego bricks or their mass sets to um, balance generation with the demand or the loads and um, we 
sort of walk them through a basic time scale. And just like with the baseload balance activity that you may have facilitated in other settings, um, there is a cheat sheet and we're going to go by five megawatt um, increments rather than 50s and 25s. So that may hopefully make it easier. Um, and for those of the folks online here who are doing Power South, this might be something that when you split up your activities in groups, it might make sense to call this out. Um, I know baseload balance is used a good bit across the country now with some of our various sponsors. So it's a fun way to do this activity. And I've seen it done. I have a teacher friend who does this with candy, various candies instead, um, and knows that the candies all weigh different amounts too. So that's a, a different way to bring it in if you don't want to use or it, don't use a mass set or all of your mass pieces have disappeared like mine typically did um, in case you're in that same boat. Anybody have any questions about any inspectors? Um, the kit contents just briefly are showcased in the picture there. You're getting your student thermometers, you're getting probe thermometers, um, an indoor outdoor thermometer, the kilowatt meter, the light meter, the bulbs, and the hygrometer and um, yeah, hygrometers. So those are your, your kit components, nothing too fancy there um, and nothing brand new that anyone hasn't seen before. Any questions about inspectors? Awesome, I will keep it rolling. Um, as we sort of scaffold up here, let me do my slideshow, whoops. As we scaffold up, um, oh, great question, Robert. Um, how long will need be highlighting CFL bulbs? Um, that's a great question. We will continue to include them for at least this next year because we have a good supply of them. Um, it is something that we are probably going to have to look at again in the near future, maybe the next edit, um, because they are becoming less and less available and some of our industry sponsors aren't including them in, when they do giveaways, they're doing um, going straight to LEDs. So it is a good question. Um, for the purpose of these activities, I think it's still valuable to keep them in there for the next few years because um, kids may still have them in their homes. It may not be something that you're going to the store to buy, but you may still have a couple CFLs in your various fixtures around the house. So it might take some time for those to get phased out um, in the home, and therefore we maybe won't phase them out in our kits just as we're still incorporating the halogen incandescent bulbs. Um, just because there are stills, kids, schools, places where folks are using those older bulbs. So um, great question. We're going to keep sort of evaluating that as we go every couple of months or so. But those of you, especially energy manager focused folks like um, Robert, please keep us apprised of major changes you're seeing so that we can be mindful of how that looks in our curriculum. Um, so let me go back a step here to school energy experts. As we move up from inspectors, our middle school content is school energy experts. And this is our middle school curriculum, um, intermediate. And what we did here is we took the two titles, um, technically three titles, and put them into one. Because the majority of learning and conserving, although it was secondary focused, um, it was intermediate based activities. Saving energy at home and school was geared towards middle school and monitoring and mentoring was geared towards that upper elementary and middle school. So we kind of took the best of those titles and merged them into one. But again, we're going to keep that school focus and we're going to keep that six lesson format. Um, we really did a thoughtful insulation activity upgrade because one of the common questions that we were getting in workshops and that you all were relaying to us was, Teachers are curious how the insulation materials we provided in the old kit, um, which were basically packing material, um, how those related to actual insulation and how those R values might align. And that was kind of tricky to describe and to relate for, for teachers in the classroom and even for our facilitators. So we said, 
what about giving students actual insulation examples? Um, we did it in building science with the insole box. So what if we gave students actual insulation materials to work with? Um, it does involve a safety concern, which we'll talk about. Um, and we think we've thought about that in the kit contents, but we wanted to make that insulation activity really relate to actual insulation as it would look in a home or a school. And um, thanks to some recommendation, good recommendation from our middle school pals in New Mexico, we added an infrared thermometer um, and this came after the tab review and it was a very easy ad and it made a lot of sense. So thank you to Robert for this suggestion. Um, so middle school students are going to also work with an infrared thermometer now. Um, baseload balance is incorporated in the middle school unit and we enhance the audit form to make it a little more appropriate for students especially considering which tools they like to work with the most. Um, the things that we kept from the old materials that we didn't really change um, are the tool-based inve investigations. A lot of those look very similar to what they did before, maybe small enhancements. Um, and that findings and recommendations sheet that um, was always incorporated after the audit um, is still there because it was it's a great discussion starter and teachers said hey we don't want to lose that um, so as you can see there in the, the picture um, you're looking at boxes and bags of stuff um, the radiation cans are there and we have our various tools and thermometers so real briefly I'm gonna switch to my webcam um, so that hopefully you uh, how do I make sure you all can see that? Can you all see my, those of you who are online, can you see my face? Hey, gorgeous. You can? Yes, ma'am. I'm new to the, the webcam thing. I always have a sticker over it because I live near Ardmore School District, which was that giant lawsuit. Um, so I want to showcase to you something very briefly. The middle school curriculum um, or intermediate, the insulation activity is different. In the past, we'd use the radiation cans, which you see here. And those cans were wrapped with various insulation type materials, which were like cellulose packing paper and uh, corrugated cardboard and things like that. So we're still providing these items. The cans are still coming. But a key thing to note to folks is that the cans are also the same cans that we use for solar. Um, it's a, I don't want to have to add to Bonnie and Cindy's load in the warehouse. So the color of the can does not matter for this activity. The sets are separated by color um, and you get one of each, um, but that's because that's how they're utilized in solar. If teachers are going to really be sticklers about the activity and want to keep um, variables controlled, you can just tell them to make sure that they give, you know, one student team two silver cans rather than one black and one silver. It's just how they set it up. But in any case, they're going to use the insulation or the cans and they're going to use real insulation materials. So hang tight for a second. Grab my insulation bags and I apologize for the lighting here, but the insulation materials that we provide are in these lovely bags. They're going to be getting fiberglass, um, which is a fun brick to buy at um, Home Depot. Cellulose, which is a lot of fibrous material. A lot of it comes from recycled um, cardboard, clothing, those kinds of things when you donate clothes to Salvation Army and they don't get used um, or purchased by someone else. They often get turned into um, cellulose fill. And then packing peanuts. And these packing peanuts, Karen, Terrell and her um, lots of wisdom researched the packing peanut density and compared it to the density of fiber uh, of I'm sorry to styrofoam insulation and made sure that it was similar so that if students are doing this activity with the packing peanuts they can relate the R value to um, insulation material much more um, logically so. Schools uh, in their boxes are now going to get these bags and they're nicely labeled rather than, you know, sheets of 
insulation material that before just looked like extra packing stuff. So the materials in your box didn't scoot around. So they're going to see these and they're going to get the cans and they're also going to get their lab thermometers. But they're going to create a house for their cans. So we're also going to provide them boxes. The boxes are going to be disassembled. Um, and so if you are going to showcase this activity to teachers, um, one of the things you can do is you can take apart your science of energy boxes and have them put them back together. <laughs> Um, because the biggest challenge in doing this activity, I think, is putting the box together appropriately. And um, Tyler helped me do this in Chicago, and we had a good time with that. Um, so if you're skilled at, like, pizza box folding, you'll probably be okay with this. But they're getting the box that um, you would normally use in your Station 5 kit. Uh, and students are going to make a house around their cans. And they may need to alter the house, so they might need to, depending on if the teacher wants to use the lab thermometers that are provided, the glass ones, um, they may need to cut holes in the box. Uh, they may consider having sort of like a, an attic situation up here. But the idea behind the activity is the students are going to insulate around their cans. The other thing that they're going to get that I'm not showing to you are plastic bags so that they can put um, the insulation sort of contained in plastic bags. We also recommend or suggest as an extension that teachers can purchase um, spray foam insulation. It's cheap and quick to find at Home Depot, but it's not something that we can include in a kit for shipping safety reasons. We don't want our friends at UPS to stop shipping to us. Um, the other thing with this activity is that obviously we're cognizant of the fact that students are going to be handling insulation materials and they're going to still fill the cans with water, um, hot water, and they're going to try and keep the temp over a period of time. And I'll showcase the activity to you in a second. Um, we encourage students at this level to set up a few different settings. So one group would do um, fiberglass, one group would do cellulose, one group would do packing peanuts, and then they'd compare. Um, and they'd set up their experiment and design it to be the same. Um, but the thing that we wanted to make sure we considered is material safety. So we're providing MSDS information when the kits go out, but we're also providing students with masks and gloves in their kits so that um, teachers are encouraging students to be safe. We understand that the fiberglass, um, when it comes in the brick that we buy, um, it's real safe to use because it's not been moved apart. But the second it gets um, spread out, those fibers can expand and head into the air. So we want to remind teachers of that. Um, so we provide them with good gloves and with masks. But um, this shouldn't be a concern for workshops. The, the facilitator kit is not changing in that we aren't adding, we aren't putting cans into the management facilitator kit. They weren't included before. We've decided we're not going to keep them. Um, if it is something that you want to do for a workshop and you've talked that over with Wendy, um, just make sure that you request the appropriate safety items to be sure that things are used appropriately in the workshop. Um, and it might make sense to remind teachers about the safety of keeping um, the surface flat, maybe putting a cover out on the, the surface like a tablecloth that you can wrap up and collect all those extra fibers afterwards. Um, so anybody have any questions about the materials that I just showed? The other thing I wanted to show you um, is and this is a different one that is pictured. Um, we're going to be switching supply to a different version. In the slide that I had previously showed you, the infrared thermometer is like a black sort of egg-shaped item. Um, they're now going to look like this because these items are a little cheaper. The um, the laser is a little less visible, so kids will be less likely to poke it at each point at each other's eyes, which I love. Um, but it's basically a point and shoot infrared thermometer, and students can, just like in the building science guide, if you've seen that activity, they're going to try and find different materials within different ranges of temperature to um, use to kind of reinforce the 
the conduction, convection, and radiation concepts that they have explored um, through their text-based activities prior. Um, and this is really handy. They're getting one in a kit. Um, presently, if you get the facilitator kit, there is only one of these. I'm going to ask now that we've had sort of our bulk supply of kits go out um, that we now start including the same number of these as we include of all other items in the facilitator kit. Um, if you're a teacher and you're purchasing the kit, you're getting one, um, and that's how it was in the facilitator kit, and we're going to shift forward to having more of these in the facilitator kit. Um, it was mostly a supply issue. We wanted to make sure as we transitioned into using these that we had enough for the people who were actually ordering them um, and they were going in the, the kits that were paid for before we put them in the facilitator kit. So um, it's really easy. It's got a nice little clip so kids are less likely to use it. They can clip it onto their, their shirts or their whatever, um, but it um, it's easier, takes up less space, and they are pretty cheap. Um, if teachers are concerned about this item, um, these are easy to purchase. You can also use like the gun-shaped ones that um, you may have seen uh, in food service or firefighters use them. Um, I think we even have one or two in a facilitator kit somewhere, and I think Todd carries one when he comes to schools, he always had one in my school that was on his like loop belt. Um, so Todd, I don't know if you're on the phone with us, but if you still have your cool one that you that you walk around with your handle. Um, but these are easy to purchase cheaply on Amazon as well. This is just our version of it from a group called Tech Instrumentation. It's who provides us a lot of our digital meters. So that is our intermediate kit. Any questions there? All right, I'm gonna share the screen again and turn off the webcam for a sec. Sorry, you don't have to see my face anymore. And I want to just briefly um, go ahead and showcase the insulation activity um, in School Energy Experts. So with the student guide, sort of say, again, same six lessons that we're working with here um, and sort of you can see the difference between elementary and intermediate um, there is some crossover but we're incorporating the intermediate version of activities um, we're calling out in the middle school level the appropriate vocabulary and units um, and then as we transition into the thermal energy activity, we're making sure we talk about the, for our thermo friends, Vern, and I know you'll appreciate this, um, the difference between heat and temperature in semantics. Um, and we're making sure students are starting to think about that appropriately. Um, and then here's our radiation activity on the, the right of the screen here that students would use with the infrared thermometer. It's, pull, it's plucked right out of building buddies, or I'm sorry, of building science. Um, so students are kind of going to do a scavenger hunt there to get and, uh, acquainted with the infrared thermometer before they use it on their audit. Um, and then the insulation investigation here is very similar to what the CANS activity was before, but now they're going to build their box-based house and fill the cans with hot water and take the temp over time. And um, the teachers can kind of help them set this up and, uh, you know, look at different groups and compare data. And it's a really great activity for doing digital learning style where students graph their data in real time, you know, in Google Sheets or what have you, so that they can look at the comparison of the three different setups or four different setups over time and compare the R value uh, and apply that to a home setting. Um, otherwise, the there are, you know, the tools activities, kilowatt meter, pretty similar. We did provide more space for students to do them, um, to do calculation. In the past, the sheet had only had like maybe five various blocks on there, so we wanted to give more space for folks. Um, and we also incorporated, this was a Karen Terrell-ism, we incorporated the mode activity into it here. So students are gonna check off what mode that device is operating in, uh, because students are often like, ooh, my, 
my kilowatt meter is broken. It's it's changing numbers constantly. Um, and that is indicative of not the fact that the kilowatt meter is broken, but that maybe that device is running and not in standby mode or it's, you know, being utilized in various formats. Um, we want students to be thinking about things in context always. So we're bringing in the discussion of the um, the bills and analyzing your energy bills, um, also comparing appliances, and then again, the lighting activities that had been done in the past, um, looking at the temperature output and using the kilowatt meter um, and the light meter to look at light output at the same time. And then finally, um, looking at systems together, they're still doing this um, cautionary tale, so they're doing a literary activity again like elementary did to look at energy systems but it's a little more simplified and they're going to look at Washington school and sort of be more evaluative of one building um, to sort of get them in the mindset of doing a critical look of their own building um, and then we give them the school building survey like they have seen in M&M before and then the audit form and the audit form, you'll notice we incorporated a spot for additional notes and comments. It's now a two-sided sheet as opposed to one. And we have the space for them to use the kilowatt meter in that space that they're auditing. <coughs> so a little beefed up uh, the audit form. And I think Karen's been using this with schools. And it's going pretty well. So that is our school energy experts curriculum. The teacher guide, same pieces as before, um, listing of masters, listing of materials by, um, by lesson. And then for this installation activity, we do give some schematic there for teachers so that they are aware of how to set it up. And again, if you're going to apply this to a efficiency and conservation workshop in a larger setting, like for example, at national conference or um, in uh, in Florida for Power South, those of you on the call, this might be helpful if you are going to try and do this activity in a longer time format than you might do in a traditional efficiency and conservation hour session. Um, again, building, uh, I'm sorry, the bingo and the conservation in, in the round are included. Um, baseload balance is incorporated here. And then we have our student text and masters. So that is uh, school energy experts. Any questions about experts before we delve into managers, our high school unit? Awesome. Uh, Karen Rager pointed out that Harbor Freight, if you have one near you or online ordering is available, Harbor Freight is a great place to purchase some of the tools that we use because they are industry related tools. Um, you can get a lot of the things that we incorporate into our kits at a reasonable price. Um, if folks have grant funds and things like that, it's a great place to look. Thanks, Karen, for the reminder. Um, and then finally, we'll do managers. So. School Energy Managers is the high school focused unit. Um, one notable thing we needed to do here was bring some rigor and some difference. Um, we wanted to make it look different enough from middle school, um, from the intermediate level, and provide something that they haven't seen yet. Um, and the school focus is still incorporated, but we're asking students to become the energy managers now. Um, kind of getting that solutions and technologies mindset as they're going around their building. What are things that they could actually employ here aside from just taking the measurement? Um, and so we are including some new items here, something different from the middle school kit. You might be looking up the picture saying, what's different? Um, the major difference is that the infrared thermometer is not included here in, at the secondary level, but instead we're including a digital anemometer. And this digital anemometer also measures temperature. Uh, it is very handy if you're doing a wind activity too, so it is a heavy hitter for need materials. Um, but it, it's going to allow students to look at air exchange when they're thinking and considering thermal energy. But it's also going to ask them to think more about air quality in their building and how that works in the system as a whole. Um, we also added a vapor barriers activity. Karen had fun with an aquarium in her house. And 
um, we ask students to do a school upgrade uh, mathematics activities. So they're really going to look at things within a school that aren't functioning appropriately given a set budget and to look at how they could enhance the school environment to again employ that thinking and apply it to the solutions mindset in their own school. So school energy managers, again, the insulation materials, the boxes, um, I will, the anemometer is pretty straightforward. I will briefly show you how it works here. I'm going to switch over to webcam again. And hopefully you can see me again, everybody. Hi. This is our anemometer. And I, just for your thought purposes, it may be something that I look at incorporating into the wind kit going forward. Um, it is a very handy tool. Uh, we get found this originally on Amazon, but we have a supplier that gets them to us more reliably. Um, but this anemometer is digital and you hold the, this is the, the only thing that's not intuitive about it is you have to hold the mode button on the front to turn it on. It doesn't have an on off button like most things do, um, but it's going to measure airflow and it measures very slow moving airflow, which is great for the activity that I'm going to showcase to you here in a second. Um, if you blow on it, you can see that I have a mouth velocity of my hot air at up, up to 2.6 meters per second, which is pretty fantastic. Um, my pulmonologist would be proud. It also, though, tells you the temperature and you can change the, the um, unit from Celsius to Fahrenheit. Um, so it is handy for doing a lot of various things within the school, and it kind of does double duty um, for the students as they're auditing their building. So other change that you um, might be excited about, anemometer in the high school kit. Any questions about the anemometer? It, like most other things that we have, in, uses a watch battery. So when the battery dies, it's pretty easy to fix this one, too. Um, it has this handy-dandy um, drop-proof case on it, so hopefully your kids don't break it. And your workshop participants. Um, as far as the adding that to the facilitator kit, it is included in the facilitator kit, and we're going to incorporate um, six of those like we did, five of those, excuse me, like we have for the other tools. Um, so with that said, I'm going to turn off my face and share my screen again. And I want to just briefly give you a quick view of the manager's curriculum. And again, text, as you will notice, um, upper level as we go through here, um, asking the students to look more carefully at how they're using their vocabulary um, and especially when they get to thermal energy we start thinking about things in a more building manager concept uh, or context so they're really going to be thinking about things um, with that systems mindset and that solutions mindset and um, we're giving them the R values we're th talking about um, fenestration a little bit I love my chance to use that word everywhere I can. Um, and we're bringing in a little more about air quality because it is something that affects a lot of students. I've got a lot of teachers talking about asthma, talking about particulate matter, mold, things like that. Um, so we felt like it was important to bring in because it is a key component of keeping um, a school comfortable. And um, that vapor barriers concept is discussed as well. The insulation investigation is incorporated, but we are, have set it up as a very basic um, STEM activity where the students design their own. And um, I did this as a trial with uh, teachers in Illinois, our ESP teachers. I let them set up their own however they wanted to. They could use a hybrid system like in many of your homes. You might have this insulation and this you know, between the wall and this surface, you might have this insulation in your attic. Um, so we gave teachers the opportunity to do that. Um, and it went really well. And one of the things that we wanted to note was how much insulation was used. And although those bags look somewhat small that come in the kit, a little bit does actually go a long way. Um, and so students can sort of set up their own uh, design here and think outside the boxes we provide if they'd like to. Um, again, like I had mentioned, we incorporated 
the ventilation. So students are going to use their anemometer and look at airflow in the building. Um, are they getting the right amount of exchange from outdoors and indoors? Are they bringing fresh air in? Are they getting the stank air out? Um, those kinds of things. And the, uh, the actual math of doing so. And we owe our thanks to Karen Trell because she likes to do that kind of math. So thanks, Karen. Um, and we love her for it. So students are actually looking at the cubic feet per minute that the air is coming out of or into their vents. Um, and this kind of is instructable for many teachers who, like I did, just put the books on top of the vents because, quite frankly, that was free space and you need it. Um, and so this might be an opportunity for teachers to sort of uncover what's underneath there and think about how it works to benefit their environment. Electricity, um, here we wanted to call out our plug it loads unit and have the students incorporate um, the spreadsheet based math into their kilowatt meter investigations. Um, and we wanted them to do the work of comparing the appliance like they were going to go out and purchase one rather than us providing the labels to them. Um, you know, sort of high schooler activities, making preparing them for the real world. And, um, you know, the same lighting investigations that we've seen as well here. But then as we look at the school as a system, the vapor barriers activity, and this would be a fun one for our high school friends to test out. Um, and Karen is your gal on that one again, Karen Terrell, if you have any questions about the vapor barriers activity um, and how it works out, um, she is your gal on that one because she's tested it more than I have. And then finally, here's that upgrading school energy systems piece, like I had mentioned, where we're going to give uh, students a situation here. They're going to evaluate Eisenhower High School, um, look at the, what they are working with presently, and look at what they could upgrade and improve based on a given budget. Um, very real life activity for a school energy manager. So we're sort of bringing that career based piece to the forefront for students. Um, and then the audit piece is incorporated here as well, same as before. Um, so that is energy managers and teacher guide, nothing really exciting to show there. So any questions uh, about that? Awesome. So let me go ahead here and we're going to... Go back to the slideshow, um, done with the webcam. Sorry, you don't get to see my beautiful face anymore. Um, but <laughs> the final piece that I want to talk about in the efficiency and conservation suite is managing home energy use. That was um, basically to replace um, saving energy at home and school. And so we didn't want to eliminate that piece. We do have some sponsor partners who want to make sure that home energy consumption is still talked about, but it is not the, key, the piece that is purchased the most. Um, so managing home energy use looks different than the other curriculum in that it's got a more fun feel. Um, you'll notice our little energy use sidekicks in there with their cute little smiley faces, um, but it's going to incorporate um, the home based tools that we used to provide, like the flow meter, the shower head, things like that, um, for folks who do have those kits or who do hand those kits out in their um, provider areas. But um, it's not going to be as beefy as the Saving Energy home at Home and School kit used to be. Um, it's a much smaller sort of leaflet mindset here. And the home kit is still available by request for sponsor programs, so it's not something that we are selling piecemeal like we used to. Um, folks have to contact us for that piece. Um, it is really cute. I would encourage you to download it and check it out. It's much um, easier and more intuitive, I think, for a family to take a look at and use and employ the tools. Um, and I, it's got a, a fun little feel, like I mentioned. So with that in mind, the other pieces that we used to have or that we had are using and saving energy for primary students. That's still around. Um, we're kind of uh, toying with what we're going to do with that moving forward. We'll probably keep it. Um, it's real basic. It does not include a kit, but that is still online. 
The other item is school energy survey, where kind of uh, Karen has put together some recommendations for me about what to do with that. So we're going to sort of evaluate that as we go. Those of you who are doing these activities and workshops, I want you to also remind folks that we have Blueprint for Student Energy Teams as a piece to help walk student energy teams through energy efficiency and conservation and energy management. Um, and that is downloadable on our website as well, and it goes nicely with those. And thanks to the Kentucky folks for continually providing the fun on that one for us. So keep in mind that those are available for you online. And then to get you out of here, I just wanted to kind of go over the things that are new this year. Um, some of you may have seen these items before, so they might not be new to you. And some of them may have been around for a while, but some of our facilitators didn't know about them if they haven't been on staff calls or if they haven't been asked to do a worksheet, a workshop on these items. The first one I want to call out, and if you have a few minutes, go online, download it, look at it now, is Star War, A Battle for the Sun. It is a solar focused play um, in energy on stage. Cindy Welchko really put it together on this one. It is super cute. Um, and it centers around characters from Star Wars, but we have changed their names. So George Lucas and uh, Disney don't come after us or whomever owns the Star Wars franchise now, I forget. Um, but you can see there that we have Hans Solar and Luke Stargazer and uh, Dark Spacer, Sun Blocka instead of Chewbacca, and Princess Rhea. So it's very cute and walks students through solar energy um, from the space perspective. And I encourage you to utilize it if you have a chance to do so. We also have um, new this year, our energy info book activities were majorly overhauled. In the past, these were just crossword puzzles and graphic organizers, and they were not very fun to use. There weren't, they weren't very activity based. And so Cindy, you know, over the course of a year, took some time to come up with some creative fun to infuse into those. And I've two picked, I've two pick, depicted on the screen there for you, a skateboard deck art design, um, a history of energy timeline, sort of a cut and paste activity. There is also a for ours barista activity that we've used at some workshops recently where students design their Starbucks cup um, to sort of advertise, reduce, reuse, recycle, and repair um, the four R's. So lots of fun and more reinforcement of content here than had been present in the past. I encourage you to check those out. The crossword puzzles and the fill in the blanks are still digital. You can still download those online too in um, interactive format, but the books themselves have a lot more heft to them and they are much cuter and I think will benefit a lot more classrooms. So as you're doing workshops, please, please, please call those out. Um, and if you have time to chat with Wendy uh, about an agenda, it might make sense to say, hey, I'd like to add this. Could you incorporate that in my copies? Feel free to do so. She loves getting those requests. Just kidding. Sorry, Wendy, you're not on the call. You can't defend yourself. Um, <laughs> exploring Ocean Energy has been out and about for like two years, but um, I just want to remind folks that it's there and it focuses on ocean energy and incorporates an oil spills activity, which some of you may not know about. It's a four part activity and it's super fun. Uh, I did it in Texas with some teachers in the fall and they loved it. And then we also have a leasing activity, which is really economics and politics and geography focused um, about what it takes to actually get the ocean space to be able to get, you know, drilling or potentially even a offshore wind turbine. Um, so as offshore becomes more of a discussion, especially for wind, that might be a fun activity to incorporate or to mention if folks bring that up in a workshop. Um, some of you have been tasked with doing Sea Run Do recently, and you're like, what the heck is this? Um, I encourage you to head to Games and Icebreakers if you haven't done either Sea Run Do or Candy Collector. Um, sea Run Do has been around for a while, and it is a lot of fun. Becky brought me into the world of Sea Run Do, and it is hilarity. Um, and 
it does not even have to be energy focused. It is a very, very fun workshop activity. Um, so I encourage you to read those instructions. One, you're putting people into groups, somebody's a seer, somebody's a runner, and somebody's a doer. And they have to recreate the artwork that you have made as a template for them, which is pretty hilarious. Um, and Candy Collector, I think most of you have seen, but it sort of introduces the concept of renewable versus non-renewable um, as students are collecting candy from a dish using a straw. And also fun for adults because they struggle with it. Um, I do want to remind you that we have those samplers in the curriculum packet each year. Page through those because switching it up this year was a electricity sampler and it is brand new. All of the content in switching it up was new to us this year. Um, and there are some fun activities in there. There's a battery activity. So building a battery. Um, the elementary baseload activity, baseload balance was developed for this sampler and, um, Oh, I'm drawing a blank. There's some other fun in there that is definitely worth looking at. And then finally, Zap That Energy Use is an energy efficiency and conservation focused board game. Um, it looks like a Monopoly board, but it does not play like Monopoly. So that is the one caveat I would mention there for folks. If they're going to play it, don't play it like Monopoly. There are some facets of it that make it feel like Mon Monopoly, but it's not. Um, and students are asked to become a business owner and overhaul their business or make the goal of making their business more efficient, but with the challenge of having only a finite budget, which we all might be exposed to. You can't upgrade your lighting and your heating and your air, you know, your air conditioning and your refrigeration all in one year in your home. You might have to do one item this year and one item next year. And they kind of navigate that challenge as they move around the board. So it is a super fun um, activity and worth a shot. If you have nothing to do on a Friday night, Barb and Robert, if you want to play, zap that energy use. Go for it. <laughs> when you're at the cabin. I'm always jealous of your cabin trips. So what's coming next on the horizon is we are going to be, I am currently and presently incorporating the notion of offshore into our wind materials. So wind for schools and a little bit um, in our wind curriculum, our traditional wind curriculum. Um, so keep your eyes peeled for that this coming year. Transportation is finally moving again. Some of you know my woes with the transportation book. It's been mentioned that it's coming for, I don't know, two years, three years now, and it's actually moving, for lack of a better term. And then for the year ahead, we have our curriculum packet contents have been decided here. Uh, we have the catalog, as usual, info books, games and icebreakers, as always. Um, a hot ticket item that we've been asked a lot for is more information on energy storage. So we're putting together a storage-focused sampler with some activities and text-based support. Um, Careers-focused activity, because, again, it's always focused on the future um, for students and why is this relevant to me. And then energy in the arts. Um, we have a lot of various creative arts focused activities within our curriculum that are great for reinforcing. So we wanted to just take the opportunity to call that out. Um, and then finally, the energy source sampler. We are revisiting that with some different activities that are from our um, traditional oil and gas or, or renewables and non-renewables materials um, that don't necessarily have to have a kit with them, but are a great way to kind of cover several energy sources in a short amount of time. So we're revisiting that old renewables and non-renewables sampler that we had from a previous curriculum packet. So with that said, um, we are finished other than if folks have questions, but I do have some shameless plugs. First and foremost, Youth Awards, don't forget, April 15th, they're due. If you are a TAB member and you have school involvement, put together a slideshow, share it with us, one or four slides to 15 slides, don't forget. Um, and remind other teachers that you know that have been doing it too. And then additionally, I really, 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 really in the next year want to work on upgrading our English as a second language materials, and we're going to start with Spanish. Um, 
with the overhauls that we've done in the past, our current Spanish support materials are not cutting it presently. If you are bilingual and you have Spanish skills, I only have German skills, so help a sister out. Email me, let me know. Um, I'm going to be sort of assembling a team to kind of tackle what that should look like and how we can make it most meaningful for students who need it. Um, and then additionally, our careers and storage pieces um, that we're infusing into the curriculum packet for this year. If you have your own knowledge on these items or if you have some additional awesome resources on careers looking at you, Barry Scott, um, or if you are sharing career based resources with others um, or with your own students, send them our way. Um, if you're doing any fun career based activities, feel free to share um, so that we can make sure that we're using things that you all know work. Um, and then, as always, if you have curriculum edits, suggestions, things that come up, send them to me. Um, I really, really, really like to, to incorporate them. Um, one of the key things that I forgot to mention today is folks have said, hey, this HTML thing for Enigma is really annoying and problematic to download. And so um, folks in Florida last summer came up with an Excel based spreadsheet version for it and Vernon tweaked it for me. So online um, you will now see that we have for Enigma the old HTML version of that, but we also have an Excel based version and that came from tab members saying, hey, I'm annoyed. We got to fix this. So when you're annoyed or when you have something come up that you're not excited about how it looks or it could change or you've tried something out and you've found something that works better, please, please, please send my way. I really, really welcome it. You may not see it that next week in action, but it is something that I really, really put. I do have a folder that I carry around with me at all times that is set edits to curriculum. So I really, really encourage you to share that with me. Um, so at that point, does anybody have any questions? I'm seeing that the, the Enigma Excel file is awesome, so that's great. I'm glad to hear that. If you haven't had a chance to download it, it is super handy. Anything else? Excellent job. Thank you. Awesome. Well, I will say thank you to you all. Go enjoy your, th it's Thursday. I don't, I don't even know. Thursday, Thursday. right? Um, yep. <laughs> thank you for spending an hour and change with me. I love you all, and um, I hope you are having a wonderful end to your school year and a great summer ahead, and we will talk to you very, very soon. Thanks, Emily. Thanks, Thanks a bunch, everybody. Thanks, Emily. Thank you. Take care. Bye, everyone. Bye.